today I'm going to share with you five books that you need to read if you want to be a millionaire. And I'm going to tell you why you need to read them. The first book I'm going to recommend, and you often hear me quoting from this author, his name is Blair Enns, The Win Without Pitching Manifesto. It's a little black book. You can read it probably in a matter of hours, so it's not a long commitment of time. And they're written as 12 proclamations. And this is Blair, in a strange way, kind of writing a love letter to creatives and how we can position ourselves as experts within the industry. So it has very simple rules. Thou shall not pitch. Thou shall replace pitches with conversations. I don't remember all the 12 proclamations, but I understand all the concepts. Blair is a consultant for creative firms, so he sees patterns of behavior that undermine our ability to hold the higher ground, or at least to be equals with our clients. We readily see this. There are basic concepts in here. For example, one of the concepts is retreat and follow. He says in the book, we should try to kill any engagement three times to test the client's commitment to wanting to work with us. And why would we do that? Because if we pursue people, we sound desperate and desperate people rarely win business and are rarely treated fairly. So instead, what we do is we take a half step back by trying to kill the project. How do we do this? We just ask simple questions of the client, like why would they want to proceed? Or saying some things like, I'm not sure that you can afford what we're going to charge. It starts to set the expectation that we need to be pursued ourselves. We're not the ones who are chasing the client because people find that behavior kind of repulsive. They push people who chase them. This is really a book on positioning more than anything else. At first, when I heard about this book, I was thinking this is an outrageous clickbaity title. Like how can we win without pitching? Because in our business of making commercials, it is a requirement to pitch. Foolishly, I delayed reading this book for a really long time, even though I owned it. But I'm going to tell you right now, the longer you wait to read this, the longer you're going to suffer unnecessarily. Read this book the win without pitching manifesto and in case this intrigues you and you're like mm, i'm not ready to commit yet go ahead and search the win without pitching manifesto with blair ends on the futures youtube channel and you're going to see a series of 12 calls that i did with blair that break down each and every single proclamation in the book i think you're gonna have a good time watching and listening to this book number two is a strange book because i think it's poorly titled but it's also just the most brilliant book it sold i think almost a million copies right now so a million people can't be wrong right the book is called the Coaching Habit and it's written by Michael Bungay Stanier, MBS. And the coaching habit starts off looking at how leaders lead and how managers manage and what we're actually doing to actually steal a sense of accomplishment and autonomy from the people who work with us and for us. So what he suggests in the book is for us to delay giving answers because answers steal people of thinking on their own and being more resourceful. And it sets up a pattern of behavior where people just come to us for answers and now you become the choke point of all progress and all development. Now, some of us entrepreneurs feel empowered and we want to have that final say and be that choke point, but you're gonna realize soon that you're gonna suffocate because you will not have enough time in the day to give answers to every person. So what he suggests is we be slower to give answers, that we stay curious a little bit longer, that we ask a few more questions to help the person find the answer themselves. And I believe the book has seven questions that are designed to be asked in a very specific order. Each one of these questions is brilliant. The question that begins everything is, what's on your mind? What's quite interesting for me is I think the book, even though it's called The Coaching Habit, has broad implications and applications to sales and client relationships beyond just management. Even if you manage no one, I would highly recommend that you read this book. As an experiment, I did this with my coaching community. I did a sales call with them where I didn't listen to anything that they said and I just asked them one question after the other in the sequence in which Michael wrote it and they were blown away at how amazing the conversation was, how insightful it was, and I would just literally turn off my listening brain and just ask those questions. This is how powerful the questions are. So after you ask the opening question of what's on your mind, you ask the awe question, which is A-W-E, which is, and what else? Tell me more. Is there anything else? So you get the person to go beyond the surface answer and they dig deeper and deeper. And in doing so, you help them to have clarity on their own thinking. They make better decisions. And this is really super important. Hey, before we go too far, I just have a really simple ask. I'm not here to sell you anything, but it would mean a lot to us just to help with the algorithm and how it runs to leave a comment right now. You can type in what city you're from, type in your name, type in anything. It'll help other people find this video. And if you're truly getting value, don't forget to subscribe. Book number three on the list is 
a book called Socratic Selling by Kevin Daly. And I was browsing a used bookstore and maybe it was fate or destiny that this book shouted to me, like, you must pick up this book. And the reason why is because it has the word Socratic in it. If you're not familiar with that, Socratic is based on Socrates and Socrates form of rhetoric, which is to ask questions. Kevin tells a little story at the beginning of the book about one way of selling versus another way, which is to ask lots of questions to help the client focus in on what it is that they want. It is probably the most effective, most useful book on selling that I've ever read. You're going to have to look beyond the cover and the design because it looks a little bit dated, but the information in it is rock solid. And let's just be honest, there's only a few ways for you to make more money. Most people focus on entirely the wrong things, which is to cut costs. That's what an accountant would tell you to do. But cutting costs does not grow your business. It just puts more profit, but it also limits your resources. The two other ways of making more money is to be better at marketing and be better at selling. So these are key skills that you need to acquire if you want to be an entrepreneur. So first, what we have to do is we have to ask this question that allows the client to focus in on something. So he tells the story. And it goes something like this. Instead of going into an office, which you've been invited to and you're prepared a beautiful presentation, instead of starting the presentation, you should start it with a question. So imagine the client invites you in and says, okay, I'm ready to hear your presentation. And this is something that you should say. Now I'm paraphrasing here, so don't, don't kill me if I don't get this exactly right. I prepared a presentation, but before I do that, I just wanted to know what is it that you're most interested in hearing from us today before I get into that? Because I don't want to talk about things that are not relevant to you right now. So this is essentially a longer form of what's on your mind. And the client will now then proceed to tell you what's on their mind. So they invited you into the room because they're, they have a problem they had not been able to solve. They also realize that the only way to solve that problem is to spend money. And so rather than trying to shove your thing, a square peg into a round hole, their problem, find out what the problem is. And then you can edit in your mind what you should talk about or not even show the presentation at all and just engage with them in the conversation. So Kevin also talks about helping them to relive the past. Before we can rush to the future, the future is getting a sale and working together. We must revisit the past and we must highlight all the pain that they feel around the problem, which creates greater desire for them to solve this problem because it's human nature to pursue gain or pleasure and to minimize pain. So when you help them to relive the past, they become much more acutely aware of why they're talking to someone like you. There's some beautiful questions and frameworks in here. There's one more that I'll share with you in that you must learn to listen and to play back. And hopefully I say this part right. He says, a recorder remembers everything forgets nothing but understands nothing you are not a recorder so what you want to do is you want to play back what you heard and summarize key points don't ask for the sale yet so a great way to do this is to say something like it sounds like or it looks like this is the problem and then you should follow up with is this right and if they say yes that's correct and then you can proceed with the next thing the socratic closer is also really beautiful he suggests not going in asking for the sale directly because it put the client in a really strange position to say yes or no and and creating tension in a sales call is probably one of the best ways to ruin a sales call. So he suggests asking a hypothetical closing question and where you remove yourself from the sales process. It sounds something like this. Mr. and Mrs. Client, it sounds to me like if this problem were solved in this way, you would be willing to spend somewhere north of $200,000 to have this completed. Is this correct? If someone could solve this problem for you, would you be willing to move forward happily? And if they say yes without pause, you are ready now to proceed. And then you would just close it by saying, I will get your proposal by end of business day tomorrow. Is that okay for you? They say yes again. So we're getting little agreements along the way and we're taking out most of the friction in the selling process. And the next book that I want you to read if you want to become a millionaire is to read Seven Principles of Wealth and Happiness written by Jim Rohn. And the reason why I cite Jim's book is because Jim has been cited in so many other authors that I look up to, key people of influence. And I find that there's this concept that Austin Kleon talks about, which is the genius genealogy of ideas. You want to trace back where ideas begin. If you're an admirer of Tony Robbins or you just admire his success and his prowess as a speaker, as a person who's able to transform people's lives, Jim Rohn was his mentor. Tony Robbins has just executed Jim Rohn's plan better than Jim has. And if you read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, he also talks about Jim Rohn as being a source of inspiration and influence. The same thing with Brian Tracy, who's written several amazing books. So I just want to go back to the source to look at the source material. Jim
Jim's story is really fascinating. And I'll just share the little story about it and then give you one highlight from the book itself. Jim foolishly decided to drop out of college and to work. And then he got married and he was pretty much broke. And he tells a story of how a Girl Scout knocked at his door and tried to sell him some cookies. And she had the most beautiful pitch and it hurt him and he was embarrassed because he didn't have any money to give to her. And instead of telling her the truth, he... He lied. He told her that someone else, another Girl Scout, had just come and he just bought a bunch of cookies and therefore he couldn't buy any more from her. It's a point in his life where he hit a low point and he promised himself that he would never be in this position again where he could refuse and lie to a Girl Scout selling him a couple of cookies for a few dollars. So Jim luckily meets a guy named Earl Scheib, I believe, who then teaches him the principles of business and how to live a life that's more fulfilled. He did not work with this gentleman for very long, but he learned these key principles which he talks about in the book. So this is not one of those books where it's, here's an action item, go do this, here's a framework. It's more of a framework for life to understand what season of life that you're in. If you've heard people talk about this before, chances are they're a devotee, a mentee of Jim Rohn, or they've read the book. Highly recommend this book. The next book is called The Brand Flip. It's written by Marty Neumeyer, who literally wrote the book on branding. Now, brand is a word that is really hot and everybody's talking about branding, but very few people actually know what it means means and is are and are using the terms correctly i think it's a good thing from a foundational point to read the book from the man who's written several books on branding and of all the books that marty's written on branding i like the brand flip the most this book is super easy to read you can read in a few hours and it really helps us understand the paradigm shift that's happened in the last 10 or 20 years between the relationship between the customer and the brand now we think brands create customers but marty challenges he says the customers create the brand so you can no longer control that but you can't influence it he talks about how we, when we buy things, we're actually joining a tribe. We're looking for identity and meaning in what it is that we do. And when you understand that and how tribes work and move, you can tap into trends that will power your brand to the very next level. So whether you're interested in branding as a service for people or to building a world-class brand with amazing traction with customers and an audience, you must read The Brand Flip by Marty Neumeyer. Okay, I could still see that you're here. And as a bonus, I'm going to give you not one, but three more books that will make you a millionaire. Here we go. It's called Delivering Happiness by the late Tony Shea, who's the founder of Zappos. The One Thing by Gary Keller. Definitely read this if you need focus in helping you to get more productive. And by Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F, and I won't say that. If you're enjoying my book summary, my book list, and getting value from this, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. That'll encourage me to make more videos on books that are transformative.